I got my bankruptcy off. It was less than two years on there. Mm -hmm. Me having my bankruptcy on there. But here's what you're forgetting. I have 14 units in my personal name. Yeah. I prevented that me understanding consumer law. Mm -hmm. I stopped them mm -hmm. from putting 14 evictions on mm -hmm. my name. I would have been homeless forever. What's good, world? Welcome back to the Tuned In with Tony podcast. And I've got my girl, Akila, better known as Mish Cash Flows in the building. That's going to be talking about credit and business funding. And the reason why I brought her on the show is because myself being an entrepreneur and a lot of you guys being entrepreneurs as well, we have to figure out how to structure our personal credit and our business profile so that we can get funded to grow our business without having to use all of our personal cash. So welcome, Miss Cash Flows, to the show. Oh, what's going on, Tony? I am so <laughs> honored to be here. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, like, we've been talking for a while, so I'm just glad that we finally got to do this. Um, and how did you get the name Miss Cash Flows, first of all? Oh, that's an excellent question. A lot of people believe that I got the name Mrs. Cash Flows because of business funding. Mm -hmm. No, my background was in real estate. Mm. So my first business was a short term rental business. Okay. And my real estate community dubbed me Mrs. Cash Flows because mm. I was cash flowing units. Mm. <laughs> so were you doing Airbnb? Yes. Okay, okay. You were never a realtor though, right? I, actually, I was a realtor. I feel like you realtor, got the realtor look. You know what I mean? I, I tried to do it after I went broke, after. Mm. My mm -hmm. business went down. Yeah. Um, my short-term rental business died, and yeah. I moved to Atlanta, yeah. and I was licensed. Mm -hmm. but I couldn't get with those goons. It wasn't working. Oh, my God. On the retail side, I was always on the investing side of real estate, mm. but the retail side. Yeah. Whew, houses is, were going like this. I couldn't even sell a house. I, I see like, what she's this saying. Is not my lane. Right, right. And about what year was that? Probably that was like in 2019. Okay, yeah. And, and that was when Atlanta was like really blowing up, and it was mm -hmm. around the pandemic when homes were like overpriced, and yeah. it was like 30, 40 hits on a house within 24 hours. Right. I couldn't compete. Got you. I see what you're saying, and yeah. that's real. And not to like shame our Airbnb people, what was the part that was difficult for you? Because I know a lot of people are like jumping into Airbnbs or thinking that that may be the best option as a second business. Like, what was your experience with that? Um, uh, honestly, I respect the Airbnb game 100%. I still love it. Mm -hmm. I just did not do fully and execute the blueprint print fully mm -hmm. the way that my mentor told me to. Gotcha. So I made a few missteps, but then it is risky, yeah. right? So I made a few mistakes, right? He told me in the beginning, Akila, yeah. get business credit, build out your business profile, mm -hmm. put these units in your business name, put the leases in your business name. Right. And just to break it down for your audience, I was doing what was known as lease arbitration, mm. right? What does that mean? That means leasing from a owner or a high rise building. In my case, I was in luxury high rise buildings and then releasing it out on Airbnb, VRBO, mm. um, nursing um, sites and all those other good. So sites. you were at their realm pretty much. Yes. Mm. Oh my God. I was killing it. I loved Airbnb. I yeah. feel like it's risky, mm -hmm. but if you do it in the correct fashion, I think it's actually a great business for someone that's a newbie mm -hmm. getting into entrepreneurship because it was my first business getting leaving corporate America mm -hmm. and it was fun. Yeah, I, I can't I cannot lie. I loved it. Got you. Got you. So I want to kind of like preframe to like where you are now. Right. And what I mean by that is when you first started that business, which you said for you failed because you took missteps, were you using like your personal cash to like make that happen? Yes, I was. Got you. So when you think about Airbnb units, so my very first unit, I ended up going into Airbnb business. Let's back it up to there because I was in corporate America. I was a network analyst. I was making a lot of money, mm -hmm. right? I was the most successful person in my family and I was responsible for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So at the time when I got laid off for the third time within the same year, which was 2014, mm -hmm. I was like, something different has to happen. Right. So a young lady in my condo building, I, at the time I owned two, four units and mm -hmm. a condo that I was living in. Right. And I had like the best condo in the building. I had the penthouse mm -hmm. corner suite. Yeah. Right? You know how corporate yeah, America people do. We nice. balling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we, we live in check to check, uh -huh. but we looking real good. Facts, right? facts. Man, I'm, I mean, my whole check was spent, right? So right. I, did, I was getting sunrises and sunsets, mm -hmm. but I needed that weekly check. You and said, what was your job corporately again? Uh, a network analyst. 
At the bank. No. Where? So I was a network analyst for for the, the mobility company. Okay. So for cellular sites. Got like you. Like cell towers. And we mm. would manage the software. I'm a geek. Yeah. <laughs> People don't know that. Yeah. 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 So we would literally make sure that cell towers and the network of a cell, cellular tower and every parts and mm-hmm. pieces that are attached to that yeah. was up and running and functioning and load right. balancing and it just gets really, really technical. Got you. Well, yeah. you said a good point that I want to talk about because it's really important to show like your credibility and that you've been through these things, right? So you were working in corporate America, right? Yes. And then let's just speak to the people who are watching this who are passionate about something, but they feel like I want to do something, but I'm stuck with my job because of the benefits and the security that it adds me. How do they jump into the business game probably in a smart way? Because they're probably going to like... You know, when you're working a corporate job, you only have so much cash extra. Even like you said, you feel like you're balling, you got the crib and all this, but you feel like I can't really do business. Is it possible for them to do it without just like killing their additional income? You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. What I now know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, you can structure out in the correct fashion, build out your business credit profile, Mm -hmm. get yourself to an 80 payback score, Mm -hmm. clean up your personal credit, make sure you don't owe anybody anything, make sure you don't have too many inquiries, Mm -hmm. make sure that you don't have any charge-offs, bankruptcies, make sure that your credit card utilization this yeah. is key listen up your credit mm-hmm. card utilization needs to be below 30 percent. 100 percent. that's what we yeah. hear yeah. right i will challenge you and say keep it below 10 percent mm. because anything above 30 percent and above yes it will harm you but mm-hmm. it's not helping you either right right once you're set up in the correct fashion, get your business um, incorporated mm-hmm. as an LLC or an S Corp, which mm-hmm. is typically where we start, right? I'm telling you, you mm-hmm. have a quarter million dollars waiting on you as a new company. So let's back it up then, because yes. now where my mind's going, let's just say I worked at Georgia Power and I made $150,000 a year. Yes. And I knew that I wanted to, because most of the time when I talk to corporate people, they're not in a rush to start their business. They're more so like they want to do it at a paced level. So what you know now, being in corporate, now being an entrepreneur, would you say, let's say they're getting their biweekly check, everything's good, go ahead and get your LLC, go ahead and structure it out. How do they, what are the first steps they can do to start building it without actually being an active business and having those expenses? But in the background, they are structuring that business right so that they can get the funding before they even start the business is that possible oh i love that yeah right so yes that's actually your first step so you need guidance so if you don't know what you're doing right i'm not selling products and services but you need a blueprint you mm-hmm. just don't know i don't care if you get a, an ebook or something like that please do not follow people on YouTube to YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. This is where people are messing things up. Like, seriously. Right. I get so many clients that come in and it's like, girl, I've been trying to do this thing for a year. Mm-hmm. I'm like, when you could have just bought like a $200 yeah. blueprint, right. and you could have been built out in the correct fashion. Guys, even if you just spent a small amount of money, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Build yourself out correctly. Right. Because it's important. You have to establish yourself as a business. Why? Because you're coming in asking for business credit, Mm -hmm. but you don't have any business credit. Mm. So you have to look good. You have to have a professional name, Mm -hmm. right? You cannot use anything like real estate, logistics, which stands for anything in the transportation business. Mm -hmm. Credit repair, of course, we know that. Mm -hmm. You want to start out with something like maybe an initials of some sort or your last name plus ventures, Mm -hmm. enterprises, you know, management, Mm -hmm. LLC, or Inc. Keep it very basic. Mm -hmm. Professional name. We can't have Hotmail or Gmail. We know Mm -hmm. this. (laughs) A professional address. Right. A corporate address that's inside of a corporate building Mm -hmm. with a unique suite, guys. Cannot stress that enough. Once you're set like up a sweet number, a sweet <clears throat> number. OK, right. Because the last thing you want is to go to like a Regis. Yeah. And I've had one of my bankers. Ask, mm. Is this a virtual address? Yeah. Like, be careful, guys, of those national virtual addresses. The bankers <laughs> are hip to that. Got you. A lot of things that she just said that I just want to break down. So let's back it up even more just so that I can help the audience understand. I could work at Georgia Power making that one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Right. And the reason why I ask this is because I've been an entrepreneur. I never had a job after college. 
and they just never gave me one. I had internships, and that's what led me into entrepreneurship, right? Wow. It was more so what I wanted to do, too. But the thing about that was where I look back and what I did wrong, and of course I had a lot of learning lessons that came from it, was like even with my event spaces, I would have the, the money, and I would just cash out. Say I've had $40,000, cash out, build it, and I would just be like, it's going to work. But the issue was I always left myself cash poor. You see what I'm saying? So now looking at it, hindsight, being that person that worked at Georgia Power, of course you get the LLC, right? What are the also steps like I hear about like the net 30s and the quills like that I could literally, let's just say they set their business up for a year just to look good on paper so they can go to the bank and get funding and then build the event space business. Like how could I have done that different and like what exact tools would I have needed to do? Oh my God. Yeah. Like, so I love the fact that if you're still at your corporate job, you have mm -hmm. money's flowing through a bank. Right. Even though your business isn't capitalizing yet or mm -hmm. you have no cash flow. That I love, right? Mm -hmm. Before you go get business funding. Mm -hmm. I always get those people a lot more money mm -hmm. because even though it's not their business making the money, the bank is just concerned with a cash flow of some sort sometimes, right? right? But let me even break it down even further. Say you don't have any money and you were like me. I went yeah. flat broke. Yeah. I literally had no <laughs> money. Right. Um, literally. So I just set myself up in the correct fashion and you mm -hmm. make sure your personal credit profile is mm -hmm. set up properly. Right. The way that I explained in the beginning, mm -hmm. personal credit profile is on debt. Actually, that is the only primary thing that you need to concern yourself. Just the personal side. You don't even really need mm -hmm. to do the net thirties. Yeah. You could just go straight to the bank. Okay. If, if 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 you're at at least a 680 credit score, yeah. And you're, but I'm going to get you even more than that. Right. If you follow the the steps and the blueprints, mm -hmm. there's no way you can't be a 780 or 800. Right. Right. Once you're looking good there, they trust you because mm -hmm. then you're like, hey, say for instance, I'm gonna give you an example. Right. Say I go into a bank and I'm like, hey, I want to have, um, okay, extend me a twenty thousand dollar business credit card. Mm -hmm. So they're first going to look to see if you have a business credit report. Mm -hmm. No. Right. Right. Then there's like, well, let's look at Tony's personal credit. Oh, Tony is looking good. Everything mm -hmm. is good. He has 10 positive accounts reporting. Mm -hmm. The credit age is nice. It's about five years. Mm -hmm. He don't owe anybody anything. He owns a home. Mm -hmm. He has a car. He has student loans. People don't understand that student loans in good standing. Actually, that's a grown person's report. Mm -hmm. so we'll talk about like that in that. a second, too. They like that. Uh -huh. And they're like, okay. We'll give you this $20,000 credit card if you PG it. Mm -hmm. But that's one bank. Mm -hmm. You can go to multiple banks just leveraging your personal credit profile mm. and getting multiple credit cards. So imagine going to five banks, yeah. getting 15, 20, 25. Mm. That, that's an easy 100K mm. instantly with 0% entrance. Yeah. That in itself, and that's no documentation needed. Because you leverage your personal credit profile mm -hmm. to obtain it. And they trust you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But here's why I like building out the net 30s. Mm -hmm. Because it actually generate, it assists you and aids you in generating business credit profiles. Mm -hmm. So I just like coming to the bank looking good. Let's just build out your business credit profile. Yeah, let's just look all the way good. It's not hard. Just yeah. get six, like, accounts reporting on DMB, um, Experian Business, and Equifax Business. What would be good. like six accounts? Because I only know of like Granger, um, Quill, Uline. Yeah. What are some other? Is there anything else that she like, or is it just you could just Google it and find? Well, I wouldn't say like Google it. You yeah. Want to? Here's what I like to tell my clients mm -hmm. and my mentees. So I like giving them the six, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's going to generate the three major ones I just listed. Mm -hmm. I tell them to get Uline, Granger, BP Gas Card, mm -hmm. Shell Gas Card. <laughs> Divi Business, yeah. which is a fintech card where your credit does not matter. They're just going to attach themselves to your banking account to determine what type of credit they should extend you. I love mm. Divi Business. Please look into them. And Capital on Tap, yeah. right? CEO Creative and mm. Shirtsy. Because you want to make sure you have at least three mm -hmm. um, credit business credit lines reporting on each report. Mm. And you look saying. good. You show up with an 80, yeah. 80 paydex, and you have a, a, at least a 700, 680 credit score. Mm. And, you and you're still working for corporate America, and you have money in the bank. Yeah. Start with the bank you're at, guys. 
Mm. People don't understand when you build out business, um, when you're building relationships with a bank, people have been with these banks for years and yeah. never took advantage of the products and services they have to offer mm. for their business. I think we're like really at a good angle too. When I'm just thinking about yeah. like the corporate person, how, and it, of course this works for anybody, but what I really like about the corporate person is one, you have W2s. As an entrepreneur, that's one of the difficult things is we don't really have W-2s because we're usually K-1 and 1099 in ourselves, right? But if you set that profile up and go to the bank, now they're like, you make seventy dollars to $150,000 on W-2, which is proven. Your credit score, hopefully that's right. But then you also have this business that's clean. And like you said, if you attach in that 30s, why wouldn't they trust you? You're a perfect profile. You know what I mean? So that's a good way just because I know most people – um, especially like our color too. Like we have the cash once we get it and we just throw it at the project. And then what happens is we know that businesses don't always stay up. The majority of them fail. And the next thing you know, it's like, yeah, that 40,000 that I had worked so hard and saved up for is now gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then now to move to the entrepreneur side, when you, some of the elements that you talked about, like Divi, I've heard about it and I was always confused. So I wanted you to talk on it too, because like I applied and it would be like, Oh, we give you account, but like there may have been a card extended or not. How exactly does the FinTech cards work? Okay. Yeah. I want to touch base on that and mm -hmm. I won't answer that question, but actually entrepreneurs can get W twos. Okay. They can, it could go through ADP. Right. And actually partner with them. Okay. So that you can have proof of income. Right. So the day has changed. Mm -hmm. You have to educate yourself and you need to be attached and keep your yourself close to the campfire uh -huh. when it comes to entrepreneurs. So like you and me, like you a master at marketing, I do what I do. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We we network with people and we run in these circles right because yes you want to look like a business like if you're someone like me i've been an entrepreneur literally if you really think about it since 2009 mm -hmm. so i'm not new to this so i used yeah. to go out and get fake check stubs yeah i'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna keep it real uh -huh. when they would ask like well show your money on and book some money i had a lady mm -hmm. that was charging me 180 dollars for page one for a bank statement mm -hmm. and 50 dollars each each and she was killing me yeah okay mm -hmm. once i discovered adp mm -hmm. the game changed i can run my own payroll i can you know show income legitly mm -hmm. and i can either 10 make myself a t i like making myself a 1099 worker yeah you can be a 1099 worker because like my issue that i always had yeah. was the w-2s and i was like as a business owner it was just like the taxing of the w-2 so that why you said you probably 1099 yourself yes sir absolutely okay. but that still is good to the bank to see that track record they're not going to care that it's 1099 versus w-2 no because yeah. it's also good for the bank to see that you are an employee mm. it's another thing entrepreneurs when you fill out these credit card applications mm -hmm. do not say that you are a, 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 you know, a, what do they call it? A contractor yeah. or a, an entrepreneur of any yeah. sort. You are an employee in your own company. Right. I work for ABC LLC Inc. Yeah. And the address is 123 Main Street. And when they Google that, they're going to see that. Because Sweet A. Exactly. <laughs> Facts. For X amount of years. Right. Yes. Okay. Incorporated. Got you. Yeah. Um, that just brought up another point that I want to talk about. Let's talk about the business names as well, because yeah. you had talked about you want to make sure that your business name is something that's clean. And I have heard that before. So, like, let's just say you don't want to be called Dream Car Exotics or, you know, like things that trigger. And I guess when people are making the names, they're not thinking about that because they're thinking about the name they're passionate about. Right. right. So can we break that down just a little bit? Um, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my very first business was Aquila Couture. It was mm. a boutique, right? And I thought it was just so like, it sounds cute, good, yeah, right? and catchy. <clears throat> what does that look like? Um, Small, you, yeah. Uh -huh. So when you go inside of a bank. You look unsophisticated. Right. It's like showing up to a job interview. Like, I wouldn't show up to a job interview in a bright green blazer. Right. I know better. Or I should know better. Right. Right? What are the colors? Power colors. Navy blue, black with a mm -hmm. white t-shirt. No earrings. No flashy nails. Yeah. So, that's that'll be you showing up to a bank. Mm -hmm. That's Aquila Couture. Right. With your home address. Asking for a $50,000, no documentation, mm. line of credit. 
And they're like, where do you come from? Now we have yeah. questions. Got you. Yeah. So if you wanted to be uh, Akila Couture, would it be best to like DBA that or something? I quite honestly, if you DBA it, mm -hmm. I quite honestly would make sure that that name presence is mm -hmm. not attached to me or my actual business name Got you. on the web in any shape, form, or fashion. That they can't link it to me yeah. via Facebook because they Google you guys. They really they, so they really look you up and all that go, stuff. They Google your name and they Google your business names during the underwriting process. Yes, mm, sir. Just to see like the history, see like what's out there about you. Who are you? Got you. Yeah. So something as little as a name could really change it versus someone who has like because I'm just thinking about my new my new marketing name. It's like bizlaunch.io Inc. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that Inc. is there. Even if I wasn't doing business, it just looks better. You're saying I like it, but yeah. I like I don't. I, you're not indicating mm -hmm. your industry, right? Because the last thing you want to say is anything like real estate, yeah, or a realtor, mm. or anything like that. Yeah, why real estate is risky. It's up and down. I was in the real estate game. I was mm -hmm. killing it for five years, right? And then I was almost homeless. Yeah, um, the guy was. I was hiding in the dark. Yeah, trying to avoid the guy from eviction. Right. So I, the bank knows that real estate is risky. Mm. So if that's not a favorable climate, mm -hmm. like marketing or um, grocery stores or whatever, it's trucking. Mm. Like trucking is risky. Mm. Um, what is yeah. favorable, or should you just be completely universal, like white blanketed almost? Yeah, definitely universal. You mm -hmm. want to be like consulting, management, marketing. Mm. Right. Um, choose something that's nice and friendly. Yeah. Like I manage companies, or I'm, I'm a consultant, or you know things like that. Yeah. And, and think about it. A lot of us are mm -hmm. like you, a podcaster, mm -hmm. you, you, I'm looking at you, Tony, you may yeah. have about four businesses under your belt. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But what, what do we do? We get one LLC and mm. we say we are in a truck, com truck driving company and we're truckers. Yeah. That's an automatic denial. Yeah. Way too risky for them. Yes. They're looking at it. Mm. Another thing I want to touch on too, when you talked about Regis, um, and this is great because a lot of people watching are like new entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. And I remember when my first business in-house, um, which is on the sign, right? Yeah. A lot of things I messed up on. Mm -hmm. My new business, I was like, it's going to be so clean. You know what I'm saying? Everything's going to be clean. But I remember when I first was thinking about starting, I was like, oh, I'm going to get a Regis so it says my address is on Peachtree. Right. So break that down of how that really just isn't the best option. I mean. You know what I'm saying? I'm just speaking to my experience, mm -hmm. right? I'm not saying that everyone that goes to Regis, they will be flagged. Right. It just has to happen to me one time. Right. I had a client from New York, and we were going for funding mm -hmm. at a bank, and they asked her, is this a virtual office? Mm. So what do you say? And they asked her for a lease. Mm. Right? Right. Um. I'm going to tell you this, which is hilarious. Yeah. So she calls me. And this was not under my direction. Right. She said, well, Keela, don't worry about it because the guy, the receptionist at Regis gave me a lease. I was like, well, good for you. She was like, and I just continue with my app. I, I did not advise her to do that. Yeah. But once I heard that, I instantly stopped. I stopped advising my clients to get Regis. Because it was a red flag. Yeah. Because if you think about it, they know that it's a national virtual office company. Mm -hmm. So here's what I do. I tell my clients now, and I'm going to tell your audience the same, give them the same direction. Mm -hmm. Just Google, I'm looking for an office space in whatever state that your company is registered in. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, office space is for rent in Atlanta, mm -hmm. right? A bunch of companies will pop up. Those buildings and those companies that will pop up, 99.999% of the time, mm -hmm. they offer virtual office services why wouldn't they it makes sense you call them and you get a company i mean you get your address with one of them and then you also ask for a unique suite number mm. the best way to do it got you that makes sense 
And then I think too, like what um, we just really got right into it. But speaking to people that are really credible and have had these experiences is always key, right? Yeah. So for you, like one thing you mentioned, you like I've been in the house hiding from the the landlord with my lights off. You know what I'm saying? In your bio that I read before that you talked about bankruptcy or whatever. What are the things that you did just to rebuild yourself? Because there may be someone on here and going back to the corporate who like, yeah, I look good on paper, but it's like I got a bunch of credit card debt. I've got all of this. I'm pretty much drowning. I just got a nice blazer on right now. You know what I mean? Like, How did you rebuild yourself? You know what I mean? What I went through, I do not wish that on my worst enemy. Mm -hmm. I really didn't have a clue. It was just me and God. I was literally co-creating my life with God. I found mm. a prayer life. Yeah. Because when you're broke, yeah. you find, you, find you, you looking for Jehovah, <laughs> everyone, Buddha, uh -huh. um, yoga. Um, it, it, it was crazy. So I just literally, Tony, asked myself, what is your next best move? Mm -hmm. And my next best move was you have to get out of this depression. Mm -hmm. You need ten thousand dollars if you can get ten thousand dollars you can mm -hmm. relocate and you can start your life over yeah started driving uber mm. went crazy started driving 12 hours a day oh made, more than full time yes i made about eighty five hundred dollars that first month right and i just stacked and yeah. i did it again another month and then i just relocated to atlanta from chicago off of uber off of uber Dang. Off of Uber, because I just refused yeah. to go back to corporate America. Right. Corporate America just wasn't an option for me. I yeah. was fired three times yeah. in one year. Mm. Right? So I was like, I have to make this work. Yeah. I didn't have it all planned out. Right. Like, people think they need to see the full picture. Yeah. And my best advice for anyone that is in a dire situation, mm -hmm. just please sit down with yourself and ask, what is my next best move? Mm -hmm. From there, that's when I saw him 500 getting in on a jet mm -hmm. on the internet yeah. saying, we could get rid of your bankruptcy, you know, child support, charge offs, late payments. And I'm like, bankruptcy? Yeah. So I'm like, yo. Had you already filed bankruptcy at that point? Yes. I okay. had no other choice because I had MCAs. I had exhausted just to give you a little background, because I know people are going to be interested in what happened to me. Yeah. I, I didn't listen to my mentor. I started out with my first unit, my personal condo. Mm -hmm. Got up to 84K, less than a year with that first condo. Mm -hmm. Joined a mentorship, which I really didn't want to pay the two grand. Mm -hmm. Look how look what yeah. my mindset was. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I didn't want to pay the man the two grand yeah. to teach me how to get more of those. Mm -hmm. Right. Ended up paying him the two grand, Tony. Literally that next year, I made over 200K from a $2,000 investment. Mm. So now I'm killing it. Yeah. Thinking I'm rich because yeah. I am the most success successful person in my circle. Mm -hmm. I still have W-2 worker friends yeah. who are making 60, 70,000 a year. Yeah. Here it is. I'm making two up to 300K a year, mm -hmm. five years consecutively. I'm killing it. Mm -hmm. The competition comes in. Mm. Company called Saunders. See, I was in the Airbnb industry when it was like a blue ocean. I was the yeah. pioneer of it. Got you. So I'm killing it. Mm -hmm. I'm charging three fifty a night. I'm showing out. Oh, right? look at you. <laughs> <laughs> we showing out. Me right. and my, the other professional hosts. Hedge funds started to catch wind of this Airbnb thing, mm -hmm. and they just came into major markets like Chicago, and I was also in California. Right. So, so what, you had right. spots in California too? I did, Orange County. And Chicago? Yes. Dang, so how, yeah. dang, that's a whole, you was managing both of them. Yeah, um, yeah. oh my God, that's why I love Airbnb. Yeah. Um, it gave me the freedom mm -hmm. I desired. Yeah. So think about someone that was, a laptop stuck to her, her mm -hmm. adult life, and couldn't even take a vacation. Right. If an outage happened, mm. you know, oh, Soldier Field went out, everyone is, come on, we have no you power, we have no network. Tower back up. Oh, yeah. they didn't play that. You'll be mm. on a bridge call for 24 hours. Mm. Literally snoring. Yeah. So to get that and then to get like the software. Yeah. And it because AI was available. It was a company called or a software called Smart B and B. Yeah. Any question that someone would ask, mm -hmm. 
you would just start teaching just like AI. AI is big now, but Smart B&B was the um, artificial intelligence service and automation for Airbnb. Gotcha. So anything they ask, I'll put the answer in there. They literally had everything answered. My life was on autopilot. I was just traveling the world like a mad woman. Mm. Everything was on Living autopilot. Life. Check-ins were auto. Got everything. You. Yeah, it was great. Got you. So the fact that you, was the bankruptcy after this? Oh, so to complete the story. <laughs> right, right. We can't leave that out. Oh, just, my like, God. I, I just like how it feel right. when I was balling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <coughs> Saunders come in. I get zero bookings for four months. Mm. That's never happened. Yeah. So you finally, feel like your, your listing probably messed up. You like, what's going on, right? I, I thought it was just a bump in the road, like a yeah. blip. Mm-hmm. I'm like, when spring comes, we'll, we'll rebound. Yeah. That That's what I'm thinking. Me right. not having the business acumen to handle what was coming my way, and I wasn't in the right circle, mm-hmm. I made poor decisions. I had $150,000 liquid cash mm. in a bank just for a rainy day. And it started to rain. Yeah. I didn't do what my mentor said. So yeah. he wasn't there to help me out of the situation. He was mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I mean, yeah. you need to figure it out because you didn't do what I said pretty mm-hmm. much. I'm like, I have all these units in my name and 815 credit score. I'm thinking, it was my idea at the time. Yeah. I could just use this cash to pay the rents until the season and the market comes back. Mm-hmm. Right? Spring never happened. COVID hit. And mm. I was shut completely down. I went from a slow drip to a no drip. Ooh. Then it was over with. And I tried to live off of my credit cards. Jeez. Bank of America, Amex, Chase, and all of them. As soon as they got wind that my credit card utilization went up, yeah, literally, Tony, that next month, they lowered all my credit limits, and I was I was busted. I had ran out of liquid cash. I ran out of credit, mm. and I was busted. So I Dang. went to MCAs. Lord, so like, before you start talking about MCAs, I, let's talk about MCAs. So for me... I was in e-commerce, right? So if people are watching, you see all my t-shirt videos below. The issue with the Shopify business is like, and one of the the overall principle, and I talk about this a lot, my favorite book is Who Moved My Cheese? Mm. In the book, they never noticed the cheese was getting smaller. Even though change is always inevitable, you had to be ready to pivot. So in the e-commerce space, it was like the Christmas and holidays would always be good because I could sell jackets for $150 and hoodies and all that. But then the summer, it always dried up because people just wear T-shirt and shorts. You can't charge that much, right? Mm-hmm. It always allowed me to have to rely on Shopify capital, PayPal capital. And then I even had a bunch of comments where people were like, they don't really understand MCAs, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, why would you go to a loan shark? You're not a smart businessman. This is I would never do that. What people don't know, PayPal Capital, QuickBooks Capital, all these are MCAs. They're daily debiting your accounts based on your income. And you're just like, oh, if they win, I win. That's the way they present it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's almost like you have some MCAs that's just like hit. You know, this Mm -hmm. is what we're charging every Friday or every day. And then you got some that are like, based on your sales, we're pulling 20% daily. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound like a lot when they sell it to you, right? Mm Mm-hmm. But it adds up so bad. It's like you start noticing, you're like, I'm paying 5000 a month for this. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then they always pitch you where it's like, start out with this terrible loan. Give us give us three months, and then we could like, refinance it. They never do anything better ever. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. it, it just drains you. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And you explained it eloquently. Yeah. Right? Um, here's what I now know. Yeah. Um, so books showed, I went to a company called Cabbage. Yeah. It showed that I was making I all remember this money. Cabbage. I used them. You did? Mm-hmm. Okay. I also used like, I want to say the company was ClearCo or something like I that. I used them too. ClearBank. Yeah. Bank. yeah ClearBank. <laughs> yeah. Bank. yeah. Um, and look, mm-hmm. you find yourself going from Merchant Cash Advance to Merchant Cash Advance because you never can get, and here's, here's why you, you can't when in that situation, mm-hmm. you're literally getting a loan against your future earnings. Mm-hmm. So how can you win? Mm-hmm. Okay, so they dump this money's in your account and like fast, you said, fast, twenty four <clears throat> hours. Mm-hmm. So be careful, Miss 
Mr. and Mrs. EIN only credit when those people are pointing at the top. Here are three banks yeah. that you can use without your credit report. Right. MCA. MCA. Right? Think about it. So they dump 40K in my account. Mm-hmm. I don't even get a chance to use it. Yeah. I'm literally paying them back with the money they gave me. Mm. So I'm 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 literally losing. Yep. I owe them forty thousand plus twenty k twenty percent, and yeah. I never w- had the ability to use the money fast enough to benefit from it. Because mentally, what you're thinking, you're like, yes. I just got twenty thousand dollars. I'm back up, but then they instantly start hitting, and you're already down what four thousand. Twenty percent yeah. times twenty thousand. Yeah, exactly. It's really sixteen thousand. And then every time I yeah. even managed it the best way, it would always be like, let's just say the loan term was six months, and it's very rapid and aggressive. You yes. know what I'm saying? Very aggressive. Yes. You try to manage the best way by month two is gone. Yeah. All the time. All the time. You know what I'm saying? So now you're just in the hole, and they like that because they want you to call them and Come explain back. what's going on. And they're going to say, hey, you made it. Look, we got you. So now you feel like they're your best friend, but it's always, it's just terrible. I promise. Um, and I tell people this. Um, once you have to go to an MCA, mm-hmm. it's over. Yeah. H- here's a better scenario. Clean your personal credit profile up. Mm-hmm. Build out your business credit profile mm-hmm. to the point where it's so strong. Do it now. That when you do find yourself in trouble, mm-hmm. you can bankrupt the business, mm. right? Hopefully, you're farther along. Versus your- bankrupting your personal life. Yes, got you. Hopefully, you're further along. That because see, in the beginning, PGing it is just fast tracking you to build out a strong business credit profile, mm-hmm. right? Once it's built out, they no longer need to look at your personal anymore mm-hmm. for future funding. Right. right. Having your personal credit there to leverage rather than having to go to an MCA, mm-hmm. you can have LOCs just on the shelf. Mm-hmm. What did I say? I named at least four businesses for you. Yeah. Four businesses for me. Mm-hmm. We can fund and get a quarter million from LLC one while the other three for the other corporations are just seasoning. Mm-hmm. So rather than having to go to an MCA, let's pull. LOCB off the shelf. Mm-hmm. Quarter million dollars. Right. That's your capital partner. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's not. It, it Ignorance is not bliss. A hundred percent. And then so the NCAs drained your account. Oh, man. And then that's when you went bankrupt, right? Man. And um, the reason why I'm asking, oh too, because when people are like, why do they keep talking about her going bankrupt? Is because a lot of people are in situations and they feel like that. That's not a viable option. And we're not saying go bankrupt, but like what made you say I can try this? Because most people are like, if I do that, I'll never bounce back. I Honestly, I had no other choice because the MCAs were snatching the monies out of my accounts. So I fast. Was, I was <clears throat> going to different. I had two different bank accounts mm-hmm. and I was getting MCAs from two different companies. Mm-hmm. And so both my the little monies that were coming in, they were snatching it out. Mm-hmm. So in order to stop them. From literally garnishing me, I had to file bankruptcy. Got you. And then with when people hear bankruptcy, they say take seven years to bounce back. Yeah, right? I thought it was over. Yeah, and it it is actually yeah. bankruptcy is not a good thing. Yeah, but a few things happen to me when you step out on faith and you start co creating your life with God. Mm-hmm. Seriously, yeah, because I cannot explain how I'm here talking to you right now. Other than the fact that I made that deal with God. Because, like, mm-hmm. when you're broke, yeah. you're like, God, I promise if you get me out of this, right. I promise I'm going to yeah, <laughs> do whatever you say. Right. And I just was led. So mm. I just knew my next best step. Right. I ended up in a financial literacy program, which I drove Uber again when I came to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Got 10K. Mm-hmm. And I joined a financial literacy program, which helped me get my bankruptcy removed within five months yeah. and I also funded myself. They removed the bankruptcy. Removed it. Mm. Five months. So that's what I want to talk about too. Yeah. Because now when you think of a business, right? Um, and a lot of businesses myself, when you don't have the financial education, 
like I said, you're cashing out, right? You're cashing yeah. out to make these businesses possible because you're passionate about your dream. Then what happens is you get a charge off, you file for bankruptcy, all this stuff. But most people only know that, well, if I get a hard inquiry because I applied for credit, right? That's going to take two years to get off. So now I'm, I'm mm -hmm. playing this waiting game. Then if I get this, it's going to take seven years because they charge on my credit card. So it's like they're doubting themselves from being able to yeah. because they don't feel like they can. So can you explain how there is light at the end of the tunnel when you do have these derogatories on your account? Okay, cool. I want to leave them with this. So first and foremost, what I learned, any and everything that's on your credit report can and will be removed <clears throat> if mm -hmm. you understand the FCRA. Mm -hmm. Right. Fair Credit Reporting Act. Look yeah. it up. Yeah. Start studying consumer laws. OK, go to FCC.gov. Also start studying consumer laws. The CFPB. I don't know the full name. Yeah. <laughs> CFPB.com or dot .gov or something them. like that. Right. Yeah. Look them up. Start studying what legal is. What is your legal right to have things removed? Because mm -hmm. I thought it was illegal. Right. Right. Get a clear understanding of that. Don't be scammy. You thought what was illegal? Getting my bankruptcy removed. Yeah. And that's what I want to touch exactly. on, too, it because people not. people who yeah. aren't aware, like, oh, that credit repair scam people, they, they this, scammers. you know what I'm saying? Me so, too. Yeah. So what did I do? Right. Like, yo, I hear you saying I could get rid of my bankruptcy. But I started studying and reading the FCRA. Mm hmm. Go to FCRA.gov. Mm -hmm. Go to FTC.gov. Mm -hmm. Start reading and understand. Even give them a call. Start yeah. understanding your rights as a consumer. Because those companies, we think they are boroughs. Mm -hmm. But really, they're LLCs and they're corporations. Right. Anyone can come up with a, a data furnishing company. Mm -hmm. they, they have no legal right to advertise you. Right. You never gave them the permissible right. Right. When you sign off things on your credit report or to have your credit profile run, you give someone a wet ink signature and give them the right mm. to run your credit. We never gave them the right to yeah, advertise. We were just online saying, yes, yes, checkbox, last four digits of my social. We never told TransUnion, mm. Equifax, and Experian, <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah, advertise the fact to everyone that I have a bankruptcy. Got you. They, they, we never. So agreed that's what to makes, that. and that's what makes it pretty much illegal on their side. So like you just telling everybody that I got this, so it is possible to get. Yeah, it goes even further. Okay, like those companies, those secondary agencies. Let's Innovis, talk about those. Okay, Innovis. Mm -hmm. You know about this. Yeah, <laughs> CoreLogic. Yeah, you know LexisNexis. The, the process. So those are the smaller. Mm -hmm data collection agencies. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones actually collecting all this negative data on us, bankruptcies, charge offs, late payments. And then they sell it to TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Right. But we have no agreement with CoreLogic, Innovis, any of these people. Mm -hmm. And we never gave them the permissible right. They're collecting public data on us and capitalizing off of it. So the entire process of how it ended up on the report to report against us in the first place mm -hmm. is illegal. Gotcha. And that's what you're attacking, mm -hmm. right? You're attacking the fact that you need to prove that this credit is mine. You just went to a place and bought this information and start advertising negative information about me. Yeah. And I'm disputing it. Right. Take heed, guys. Get a clear understanding of what your rights are and yeah. get these things off your credit report. Because it is possible. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. That's a lot. And then, yeah. Uh, what else was I thinking about, too? Like, because I, I didn't think that it was possible to get, like, these yeah. things off. You know what I'm saying? Because I think the way that you're thinking about it, you're like, and let's talk about it in some points. Because I love to touch on, like, ejections, limiting yeah. beliefs that people have. Yeah. They're like, well, I did technically have this credit card, and I did technically not pay it, and they did technically charge it off. So what makes it? Isn't it legal for them to shame me to all these people? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what, like, we would think. Well, right? that's the American way, right? Right. I was watching something that said we're the only nation that have mm. over a billion laws. Yeah. So it can go either way. Right. 
Right? So, but what I do know is you need to pay attention to the laws that are your consumer rights. Right. And technically, you did not give them the permissible rights mm, permissible to advertise right. mm-hmm. anything about you. Yeah. How did you get my personal data in the first place? Mm-hmm. Who said it was okay? Yeah. This is between me and the person that I owe. Yeah. Not you, TransUnion. Not you, Equifax. Not you experience. Got you, 100%. And what I would say, too, like, to really just put the nail in the coffin in it is in this world that we live in, you say there's a billion laws. And there's a billion laws because (laughs) there's a strategy and a game to plan the game, right? Yeah. So if you want to play at a high level, you actually have to understand your rights so that you can be able to win the game in your life versus doing what they want you to do and sitting back because that's that's how it's set up, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But they make these laws so if you do know them, you can make it happen, just like what you were saying. And then with talking about that, to go back to what we talked about earlier, um, when we talk about the different bureaus, Equifax, TransUnion, and I can't think of Experience. it. And Experian, right? When you said, like, you could set your profile up and go to all these banks and, like, get the, uh, the money, I didn't know until I started talking to people like yourself that, like, you can go to banks that just pull from individual ones yeah. and get funded or get credit through all these people. Because I looked yeah. at it like once you apply, all three of them get hit. Yes. That's what it felt like. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Is that, do they not all like report like simultaneously all together? That's correct. Okay. And, and that's <clears throat> a beautiful thing. And mm-hmm. it was how I was able to get over $300,000 for myself, right? Mm. That's called in my industry credit stacking. Okay, right? credit stacking. And, which is a great thing. And it, it's, it's, it's great. Yeah. So once you understand who reports where, you can then get more capital for yourself. Gotcha. Versus, or, okay, for instance, these credit bureaus, they may report negative things on TransUnion, but it's inaccurate there, but mm. it's not reported on Experian and Equifax. Right. What, what does that give you the power to do? Mm-hmm. Okay, TransUnion is tripping. So right. <laughs> <laughs> let me see what banks report to Experian. Let me see what banks report to Equifax. Got you. And let me get funded. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, here's another thing. Like, when you really think about it, information is key. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy we're having this conversation, Same. right? Right. Right. (laughs) So when the reason that I think you should understand your consumer, right, if I would have kept I got my bankruptcy off, it was less than two years on there. Mm -hmm. Me having my bankruptcy on there. But here's what you're forgetting. I have 14 units in my personal name. Yeah. I prevented that me understanding consumer law. Mm -hmm. I stopped them Mm -hmm. from putting 14 evictions. On my mm. name. I would have been homeless forever. Yeah. This is why laws are there to protect us so yeah. that we can start all over again. Mm-hmm. This is why bankruptcy even exists. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't have be in a place where you had to. I went bankrupt because I was trying to pay my bills. Yeah. I'm not a scrub. Right. I liquidated all my money so that I can pay my bills. Mm-hmm. But it was to the point where I just, I'm, I don't have it. Right. Yeah. Right? It wasn't like you were trying to be bad. You were just trying to, yeah. I just didn't have it. You made some missteps trying to take care of yourself. This is why billionaires and wealthy people bankrupt businesses. Yeah. It's legal to do so. You need to understand how real business people move. Right. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that when someone like me do it, they want to attack it and question it. Right. But when Donald Trump or someone else does it, it's okay. Right. No, it's okay for you too. Right. So don't hate the game. You, you don't know, hate the player, player hate, hate the, the game. game. No, yeah. learn the game. <laughs> right. <laughs> like really learn it and understand it. Because once again, ignorance is ignorance is not bliss. Yeah. Ignorance is poverty. Mm. Ignorance is, is, is homelessness. Yeah. Ignorance is losing your business. Yeah. Ignorance is struggling and striving and roughing it out for the rest of your life. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Hey. Talked about a lot, didn't we? Yeah. We're not done, though. Okay. So the reason why <laughs> is because another limiting belief that I want to talk about is what we know that Miss Cashflow does is help people get funded, right? So break down 
what high level funding is that you do versus somebody saying, I could just go on Blue Vine and do it myself. Or I could just go online and find one of these people to do it myself. Why would I pay someone like Cash Flows to help me out? Let's yeah, talk about that. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, because what I love to do, you being a newbie entrepreneur, mm-hmm. I like to safeguard you. Right. Why? Because I've been through worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. And I don't want it I don't want that to happen to you. Mm-hmm. A lot of people who we deal with that are entrepreneurs, they've never seen a hundred thousand dollars at one yeah. time. It is scary to get say you gotta yeah. prove for a hundred because you're like, Do I even believe I could pay this back? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So yeah. The worst thing you can do is run out and get a loan Mm. for $50,000. And then the clock starts running, but you're a newbie entrepreneur and you really don't know what you're doing. And you don't have the cash flow. And you don't have the business Mm -hmm. acumen. Right. Mm. Right? You need to pace yourself and get good. So I like that you brought up the credit bureaus and we spoke about credit stacking. Mm -hmm. That's what I like. I like for you to understand that strategy and go out and get yourself up to a hundred, $150,000 in 0% interest credit cards. Mm -hmm. Now I have time to learn and make a few missteps, Mm -hmm. right? You can get 0% interest credit cards up to 20 months. Mm -hmm. And then what you can max it out on the business side, Tony, Mm -hmm. it's not going, going to harm you. How high credit, Credit card utilization harms you on the personal side. That isn't a factor on the business side. Mm -hmm. And you can max the card out with ease Mm -hmm. and only pay back 1% of the entire balance owed over that 0% interest time. Mm Mm-hmm. Huge, huge, huge. Yeah, very different <laughs> than running out to Blue Vine and getting fifty thousand dollars where the clock is ticking yep. and you're rushing to make business deals that you don't have a clue. Yep, where you have a hundred thousand dollars in zero percent interest credit mm-hmm. where you can take your time yeah. to pay it back interest free. It's good you said that. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to touch on it because I, it seems like. People say, I just do it myself. I'm not, I don't need a coach. I don't need that. But like you yeah. said, I remember, have you ever heard of like Funbox or something? Yeah. I remember I was like, I'm going to try Funbox so I can get this money. And it was like. How did that work out for you? I didn't do it because it was a bad deal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like you apply for it and they're just like, oh, it'll just be 1500 every Friday. And you're like, yeah. That's an MCA too. Exactly. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But people feel like, oh, I just got funded myself. And they're taking missteps. Yeah. And they may end up like how you were. So that's the reason why. Again. Yeah. <clears throat> be careful of your EIN only people. Yeah. Those people that you're following. <laughs> their strategy is to build out your business credit profile. Get right. you up to 80 paydex score and take you straight to MCAs. Mm. Tony, a bank is only going to give you money for three reasons. It's yeah. called the three C's of lending. Yeah. Your credit, which Mm -hmm. is your business and personal credit profile. Collateral, Mm -hmm. if you own a home or if you own a piece of equipment with a serial number attached. Mm -hmm. Or your cash flow, which are famous for MCAs. Yeah. So if I can show a book of business and I have an 80 paydex score, fun box. Right. Cabbage. Uh Stripe. All those. And they're smiling and they're selling you these products and services. And I don't like it. Because mm-hmm. I have I have been a victim of that. Mm. And it's okay for me to... Ca- I don't feel okay capitalizing mm-hmm. off someone and sleeping at night. It may not be intentional, mm-hmm. but this is just me. I believe in karma. Mm-hmm. Here it is. I'm speaking on your platform, and people are looking for guidance, and mm-hmm. they're probably me. Yeah. Almost homeless, maxed out, high credit card utilization, and they see me saying I'm giving them an out, which is fun box, mm-hmm. and they get into a, a deeper situation. Yeah. Listening to me. That, that's bad. Words are powerful, mm-hmm. and you need to know what you're putting out on the airwaves, and you need to understand the impact. Mm-hmm. So don't be a follower. You don't have to listen to me. Do your own due diligence. Mm-hmm. You make the choice. Do you think it's worth it to understand consumer law and mm-hmm. clean up your personal credit profile and then go zero, go get obtain zero percent interest credit cards? Mm-hmm. Or do you want to fast track it, go and get a zero, you know, build out your business credit profile and go to fun box? Right. The choice <laughs> is yours. Got you. Hey, well, y'all heard it. The choice is yours. I want to thank you for coming to the show, but let us know, like, how do they tap in with you? Because a lot of people who watch this are probably like, 
hey, I work at Georgia Power, a corporate job, and I do want to start a business and I want to do it the right way and not hurt myself or my family. People are, hey, I may have the charge off for the bankruptcy and you are me. Like, how do they tap in with you so they can learn from you and you could guide them? Okay, you can get with me. The primary way to get with me would mm-hmm. be to follow me on Instagram and YouTube mm-hmm. as the Mr.'s Cash Flows, right? Mm-hmm. And I would like for you, just for your audience. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a course yeah. that I am literally giving away for free and mm. coaching people for 30 days. Okay. This course will walk you through becoming a credible business, how mm-hmm. to name yourself, how to get a professional email, website, phone number. Mm. This is where people are struggling. Yeah. And I felt fortunate enough. Yeah. And I love karmic, great karmic seeds. Yeah. So I want to spread that out to the world. Yeah. Let's do that. No catch. All I ask is that you give me a shout out once you get a result. Yeah. So hopefully you'll have the link for them down yeah, below. Definitely. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And follow me on YouTube and Instagram, Mrs. Cash Flows. Okay. So y'all heard her. That's Akila, Miss Cash Flow. So we're going to put that link below. Free, no catch. You guys can literally do it. All she asks for is for you to shout her out and just show that it works. And we'll see y'all on the next episode. Peace. Thank you.